And, but anyway, I was going to say is Mission King of the Baggers is going to take us uh, to the end of this great day of racing action. A six lapper for their first of two races here. And as we take a look at that starting lineup, Kyle Wyman uh, has just been uh, literally almost untouchable here and is up uh, and qualifying by over a second uh, over Hayden Gillum. But that bike continues to run very slowly. I just couldn't pick a number out and running uh, very slowly and trying to stay off line James Rispoli in third Bobby Fong has to turn around in a big hurry here and uh, the the other guy who we think would be doing that is Hayden Gillum he DNF'd in that superbike race and I wonder if he just pulled off early and said look I've, I'm going for a championship here in Mission King of the Baggers uh, I got to save some energy and also already had stock 1000 earlier yes. so I mean if yep. that was the case you never know. We we thought Kyle was going to dominate the mission challenge earlier today, and things didn't work out. Exactly. Uh, this is why we have the races. Six laps coming at you. Time for the call with Greg White, Jason Pridmore. Gents? We're thundering towards the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship. This round is Moto America Superbikes at Texas from Austin at Circuit of the Americas, also known as CODA, and right now is Mission King of the Baggers. Race number one on deck. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm Greg White, standing alongside two-time national champ Jason Pridmore. Now, Jason, Mission King of the Baggers, we have ourselves a championship this late in the season. Yeah, tightest championship we have here at Moto America. Three points separating the top three guys. The Vance and Hines, Harley Davidson's guys have had something this year for the factory Harley of Kyle Wyman. As we go back to King of the Baggers at Brainerd Race 1, you'll see Hayden Gillum go up the inside of Tyler O'Hara, who had a motor problem, would dump that bike into the grass. Gillum goes on to win race number one, his second win of the season. And this is what really started to bolt Hayden Gillum into that championship lead. Now, Bobby Fong on the second day didn't want to hang around and wait for anybody. This guy's only 45 points back in the championship, Greg. He's still in there with a shout. Bobby Fong could get on a roll here even at Coda. Yeah, and this long racetrack could have some really great racing. Now, here is the points as we see it right now. So you see Hayden Gillum leading, and then Kyle Wyman Rispoli only three back. You mentioned Bobby Fong, but it's this top eight with Corey West. He is 96 points back, and there's 100 points on offer. So for Hayden Gillum, he's going to try to hold on to this lead, but they have to contest with this 3.4-mile circuit known as Coda. Yeah, and what a beautiful place this is as you go up a big, steep, Turn one, very tight turn into a run of S's. And this is where these big heavy bikes, who's got their setup the best as they get down to turn 11. Another very tight left-hander onto 160, 170 mile an hour back straightaway into a gang, Greg. A very tight left-hander at the end. They go through a little stadium section. The thing that you see behind our screen there, that's turn 16, 17, and 18 around that big tower into 19. And then again, a very slow turn 20 that takes you back onto that finish line straight. Well, over 100 degrees night here Bobby Fong on an Indian motorcycle and Tyler O'Hara need to put a stop to the domination of Harley Davidson big story unfolding here Tyler O'Hara uh, the defending champion, who's uh, you know back in the points just a little bit, but you know I saw somebody on that on that outlap uh, running offline, hand up, trying to get out of the way. It must have been Tyler O'Hara. They're in a the pit. Well, and also too, if you think about this morning in that uh, second qualifier, right? They had that chain break on the exit of turn one and had the big crash, and the bike you know flipped down the the hill down into turn two. Looks so, like he's done. Yeah, it looks like he's done. So maybe they weren't able to. You know, all those repairs, maybe yeah. something wasn't right. Well, I mean, they there was a lot of damage to that bike, and they had to definitely do the old thrash uh, to try and get it out there. And Tyler obviously noticing something right from the, uh, uh, the go here. So the defending champion not going to make this race, but a huge points battle is continuing here in Mission King of the Baggers. And, folks, it is coming at you next. Mission King of the Baggers coverage is brought to you by Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. By Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. By GEICO. Visit GEICO.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. And by Drag Specialties, 
an industry-leading distributor of aftermarket parts and accessories for Harley-Davidson and custom V-twin motorcycles. Tyler O'Hara having a conversation with Teague Dane, and he should be out on the racetrack, but it doesn't look like factory Indian rider and his bike sitting there, and we're not sure if that thing's running. Jay, there was a yeah. race earlier on today, and for Tyler O'Hara. And he had a big one this morning through no fault of his own also. Has it looked like this morning, Greg, a, maybe a chain came off, and you're going to get a look at it here. This is at the top of the hill in turn one. So for those that don't know, you get a, you climb up a big, steep hill, and you start to go down a big, steep hill. And unfortunately, this happened to Tyler. Now, I know it's going to sound crazy even with the bike running into him, but this could have been much worse. Had he gone off the high side watch the at chain. this point, right? Watch the chain on the right there. Had, this, had he high sided at that point, he would have been launched downhill, like a big steep downhill, probably three stories, four stories down. So in all, I think he got off pretty easy here. But of course, that team had to rebuild that bike and do whatever they could. And for this guy here, that is just really bad luck for Tyler O'Hara. So I'm really bummed to see that. All right, let's go to our starting grid is unfortunately for the fifth in points. The number one plate, he's out of this one. So it's Wyman, Gillum, and Raspoli on row one. The three at the points lead there up on the front row, Fong, O'Hara, and Wyman. Obviously, Tyler's not going to be in this. Meg Williams, Own Sorg, and Corey West with Jake Lewis, Flinders, and Frankie Garcia outside of row number four. Then we got Hawk Mazada, Robert Johnson, and Patricia Fernandez rounding out our field. So. Three guys that we kind of expected to see at the front are going to be there. Bobby Fong is going to be the wild card in that as we saw him win our challenge race this morning, which is only two laps long, Greg. And Bobby Fong rode the wheels off of that Indian to do what he needed to do. And you can see him just over the right behind uh, James Raspoli here closest to us on the 50 is Bobby Fong. Those are the four guys that I think are going to be battling it out here for this win. Travis Wyman also had some uh, some pace in that that. Uh, race earlier this morning as well. Yeah, the challenge race for $5,000. But here we go. It's Mission King of the Baggers race number one. We're underway as the lights are off. And the 33 of Kyle Wyman looks like he got a really good launch as they head off into turn number one. That is so steep up the hill. Is that Hayden Gillum trying to go around the outside? It is. Rispoli in third. So the 33 on the Screaming Eagle Harley Davidson factory road glide leads the way from a pair of privateer Harley Davidson's. And Bobby Fong just slotted himself into fourth. He got by the other factory Harley Davidson of Travis Wyman as they went into turn three. And you can see the front three guys are trying to get a little bit of a gap. So the way that Bobby was able to get that win this morning was kind of pulling himself up to the front and then ride very defensively. And I think this is what everybody was a little scared of. Kyle Wyman so far this weekend has shown that he's got incredible pace on that factory Harley Davidson. But you can see right now, the work that the Vance and Hines Harley Davidson team has done to try to keep this factory bike in check is working so far. There were some big changes overnight for those Vance and Hines Harleys, and they've done a nice job of giving their riders a little bit better package to hopefully try to compete with Kyle. Down the back straightaway they go, a long drag, and you can see that Kyle has a slight advantage on the acceleration to getting towards that top gear. They actually get into sixth gear for a little while before they have to downshift to go to this corner. Bobby Fong trying to go oh, close man. the gap on the brakes on the inside. Fong can't get it turned as quickly as the Harley Davidsons in front of him. But those Vance and Hines mission Harley Davidsons looking good. Let's welcome in the third member of our broadcast team. It's Hannah Lopa to the mix. Hey, Hannah. I touched base with Tyler O'Hara's crew chief, Al Ludington. He told me the bike's pushing water. They're not quite sure exactly what the issue is. They'll go back to the drawing board tonight, diagnose it. They'll be working hard overall. But he said maybe it's something they just missed re during the rebuild. It's just kind of the highs and lows of racing the team earlier today wrapped up Tyler's second Super Hooligans Championship in a row. Yeah, so there you go, Jay. Yeah. It's, he's highly disappointed, of course. He wants to carry that number one plate one more season. But, you know, this is a season right now where it just feels like these three have been head and shoulders above the rest with Hayden Gillum three points ahead of Wyman. So this is exactly where these Vance and Hine Mission Harley Davidsons want it to be if they have to race against Kyle Wyman, of course, who's a champion from two years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, for Hayden Gillum, we've seen him ride so many different bikes this year. I really do believe that if Kyle can just get some clear track like he's got right now as the laps wind down, he has shown incredible pace. Now, that said, Hayden Gillum is a, is 
kind of a Sunday guy, if you know what I mean. He is always up for a good fight and a good race, as is his teammate James Raspoli. So, you know, for them, they've got to do everything they can to stick on the back of Kyle, find out if there are any weak spots in his arsenal. But yesterday and then, and then this morning, the 33 put down a 215.8, I believe it was, yeah. which is incredibly, incredibly fast. And uh, to put that in perspective, our, our stock 1,000 bikes are doing around 212s. I think I think 212 is what Hayden Gillum did on his stock 1,000. So you can imagine uh, how fast it's got to be around such a long track to have only be three seconds slower from that bike to this one. As you can see, Kyle getting that bike all out of shape as he gets down there into turn 11. And this is the point where we see who's got the horsepower. Let's not forget for Hayden Gillum doing triple duty this weekend, Jason, uh, in Quartz Medallia Superbike in stock 1,000 as well as this mission king of the baggers, Hannah. Hayden Gillum's not the only one running multiple classes this weekend. Out of this top eight here, it looks like the only two who are only running baggers is Kyle Wyman and James Rispoli. So Hayden on triple duty, you got Fong double duty with super bikes, Travis Wyman on the stock thousand, Kyle Onsorg and Hooligans, Jake Lewis running super sport, and Hooligans, Flinders running super bike. So <laughs> it's a really, really difficult weekend. These guys are jumping from bike to bike and trying to stay hydrated and trying to stay fit and just really manage these conditions. And you know, Hannah, sometimes it's an advantage when you run a couple classes because you get more track time, especially at a track that's as long as Coda. So you can get that extra track time, see things out on the track uh, a little bit more. But on a weekend like this, where it's been as hot as it's been, it can definitely play into as far, um, it can play into your, your physicality, of course, and wrestling these big bikes around uh, is no easy task. And you can see, Greg, this little gap that I was talking about at the beginning of this lap that we could possibly see. I think once Kyle kind of gets into that groove, he's going to be able to pit board watch a little bit. And uh, Hayden Gillum looking back like, like that right now kind of is a tell to me of he doesn't know if he can quite go with Kyle, but he's got to try to defend that second place now because we know that his teammate is also just three points back in that championship. Kyle's three points back, Raspoli's three points back of Hayden Gillum. So Kyle's doing a little bit of what I think he was going to do. 216.4 for the factory Harley Ryder, and that was about four tenths quicker than the two guys behind him. And Bobby Fong actually still hanging in there, three tenths off that, that pace. These motorcycles, of course, 620 pounds is the minimum limit which I'm told that the Screaming Eagle factory Harley-Davidson is right at that limit. And of course, these Vance and Hines Mission Harley-Davidsons are right around that mark as well. Jason, did you know that these road glides start their lives as a production bike at 900 pounds? Wow. And they're slimmed down to 620 pounds. And it's so interesting to see the last couple of years, the evolution of these motorcycles and how much there are super bike type parts that have made their way onto Mission King of the Baggers machines. You're exactly right. Bobby Fong is gone. I don't see Bobby back there. He oh, went into yeah. that turn and he must have overshot it because he was closing on these guys. But if you watch what Bobby has been doing, he's been riding this bike a little bit like a super bike. He's been getting down to the apex very, very early and almost stopping it through and past the apex and standing it up off the edge of the tire and giving it a big handful of, of throttle. So maybe that time there, was one of those laps where he got in there a little bit too deep and couldn't get that Indian turned and had to run out a little bit wide. So these guys now 38-3 to 38-7. First split for Kyle Wyman to Hayden Gillum. So again, four tenths of a second. Second split, pretty close between them. So second split, Hayden Gillum's been able to do exactly what he needs to do to kind of keep Raspoli at bay also at the moment. So you saw earlier when we had our Geico weather information up on top of the screen yeah. that it is 101 degrees outside. That's 101 Fahrenheit. For those of you that deal in Celsius, that's 38.34 degrees Celsius. Hannah? So something I thought was pretty interesting, talking to some of the riders, these baggers do emit quite a lot of heat, especially in these conditions out here. But the fairing is a much different shape than what you see on the super bikes or any of the other sport bikes. It's so much smaller and so much narrower. So heat is kind of able to get out from behind there. But some of the riders have been talking about their hands getting so hot because that hot air has no way to get out from behind that huge fairing. And yeah, that's, of course, in the spirit of the rules with Mission King of the Baggers, Jay, and you know, it, it is a bagger, and if you look at those street versions of those oh. motorcycles, it's beneficial. What do you it see? certainly is. I'm watching Raspoli just slide this thing around. These bikes, they live in the torque curve. I mean, especially coming down through a sector like that, and uh, he just gets on the gas, winds the thing on, and, and the bike just literally spins 
This guy's bike, though, Greg, looks pretty stable. We saw Kyle come off a really bad run at Brainerd, if you remember. We didn't see him anywhere near the podium, and I remember getting a text from him that last that night. Didn't really affect him that much. He just said, hey, I don't, I don't really know what just happened this weekend. It just was one of those crazy weekends, but you can be assured that the factory Harley-Davidson team went to work. They they came here and tested, they as did. we know, and, uh, and he felt a lot more confident coming into this race this weekend, um, even though he, he's coming off what was arguably the worst weekend of his career on a bagger. Yeah, of course, in the nose of that bodywork that Hannah was talking about is an oil cooler. But by all intents and purposes, this is an air-cooled motorcycle. And to deal with these 101-degree temperatures, uh, you know, they said that when they were here testing, it was in the 90s was factory Harley-Davidson. And they were really pleasantly surprised at how well the heat management was on this motorcycle. Bobby Fong still trying to push the issue, but it's 16-7. Last time by for Kyle Wyman. 17-2 for Gillum, 17-4 as Raspoli's trying everything he can to just wrestle this motorcycle into compliance. He's doing a good job of it, Jay, but you have to look at those little mistakes. Watch the, the shot right here. You're going to see as these guys go through here and they get just through here. Uh, we didn't quite get it, but the bikes are just kind of hung out. Raspoli's got that thing hanging out there. And uh, again, it, the, the torture that it puts on these Dunlop tires, it's no wonder that they can make a tire that is, is going as fast as these guys are. Dunlop's done a really good job. As you see a live championship point standings right now, Kyle Wyman would retake the lead, and it would be a two-point uh, lead over Gillum going into tomorrow and nine over Raspoli. So for James, I think it's really key. If he can, he's got to try to do everything he can to get this second place to not fall so far back. Remember, these are going to be having their finale in New Jersey. So we're going to get to see three more races of our Baggers Championship. Bobby Fong that time by 16-9. He closed up almost, well, what is it, Greg? 0.7 of a second on the battle for second and third. So Bobby Fong right now is the man on the move still. Yeah, he could definitely upset James Raspoli's plans and even Aiden Gillum's plans. That's right. This could work in Kyle Wyman's favor if Fong keeps on trucking. And he is unbelievable on his Indian Challenger motorcycle. It's a SAC SDI Racing Roland Sands Indian. And, Jay, when you look at Bobby Fong and the way he rides this thing, I mean, you know, back in the day when you raced JP, it was Superbike and Super Sport. Yeah. Always going back and forth. Yeah. But with the variety of motorcycles that Fong is on, I mean, you have to wonder the talent level and how amazing it is and how quickly he evolves from a super bike that weighs 375 pounds to this machine. That looked a little bit better as far as how he kind of got in and through that corner. So maybe he's worked it out a little bit that he that he can't just keep ripping down to the apex as he's gone 38-3, first split, fastest split of the race. Let's see how he gets down here on the brakes behind these two Harleys. You can see him kind of following them in now, right? Yes. Remember the beginning, he was aiming for the apex. So him being able to carry that roll through the middle of the corners is what's allowing him to start to bridge this gap to the two Vance and Hines Harley-Davidson riders. To get back to your point, you, we've got some crazy things as far as like Jake Lewis is riding super sport in a bagger. You got Mesa riding a super bike this weekend and an electric bike. So guys now are riding different brands, different bikes, different makes all throughout our series. And, uh, you know, jumping on one of these after jumping on anything else has got to just feel a little bit different. So Kyle Wyman holding on to a two second lead over Hayden Gillum on the 79. That's the Screaming Eagle factory Harley Davidson. Outstanding looking livery, and then Hayden Gillum starting to put a little bit of daylight between himself and his teammate Raspoli on those Vance and Hyde mission Harley Davidson. All the while, here comes Bobby Fong, who's had a race win this season on the Sacramento Mile SDI Racing Roland Sands Challenger. It's an Indian Challenger. And it looks like Bobby Fong is oh. down, Jason. And oh, no, for Bobby quarter. Fong, last corner. And all of that effort for Bobby Fong. He hits the deck and he is out. And that's going to give some breathing room for these top three Harley Davidsons. And it promotes Travis Wyman into fourth. And then Kyle Onsorg is your lone Indian in the top five now. Yeah, but you look at this guy and it's exactly kind of what we might predict happened. Now let's look and see what Bobby did here. Didn't look like he was in there, maybe a little bit tighter, um, but he was trying to maybe get that bike rolling, but just loses the front, Greg. And you can imagine the pressure it puts on that front tire as you're tipping in, leaning, especially in this heat. But for Wyman right now, you can see him short shift that bike as he comes up out of turn nine. There's Gillum. Raspoli still doing everything he can, but now Gillum even has almost a second over James. So it's about 0.8 that time through. Fong was on 
arguably maybe the fastest lap of the race too going in there he had the fastest first split of the race his personal best in the second and it did go white there in the third but he was definitely on pace to do another 16 that lap by on this final lap Kyle Wyman has it all in his hands on the last run down the long straightaway as I'm sure now Kyle's having some fun moving that thing around a lot of experience in a variety of motorcycles in his life including flat track but Jay, they talk about the weight of these motorcycles and the and the length of the wheelbase and how fun it is to ride because you can get it sideways but the thing that you and I keep marveling at is that how good these things turn and the lap times as Kyle Wyman has a 216 429 back on lap number two is the fastest lap of this race so it's going to flip flop this championship if Kyle can keep it to the checkered flag so it's going to keep things really interesting for Kyle Wyman he had a plan coming in here Jason and he's executed it to perfection yeah he really has and this is going to be a big boost for him and that team to show that they can come back from a a little bit of a, of a bad weekend there and Brainerd show a little resilience and uh, get back to work and the 33 is going to bring this one home for race win one here at Coda tries to get that front wheel in the air doesn't get that done but he gets the race win in the books for Kyle Wyman a 2.1 second victory and maximum points of 25 over his rival Hayden Gillum who scores 20 points and Rispoli will come across in third having banked 16. Travis Wyman in fourth a good rebound for Travis Wyman as we've seen him struggling on and off throughout the season own sword Indian motorcycles rider he is in fifth place is the number five on that Roland Sands design Indian Challenger. We'll take a break and we come back. We're gonna to talk to our race winner, Kyle Wyman. He'll give us his version of his race win. Well, Kyle Wyman doing exactly what he needed to do, Roger, in terms of this points championship, and Hayden doing everything he could to just stick right with him there. Uh, to me, the, you know, sort of the coulda, woulda, shoulda story here would be Bobby Fong. If he got a better start, um, he looked like he might have had pace to go and do something with Kyle had he been up there. Yeah, just, you know, qualifying, better start. Yeah. Kyle's been on pace so much this weekend. When he gets a really good start, you can't really spot him. And even the other guys, that much time and – so for him, he was just kind of overriding it. Yeah. Obviously, he was there kind of on that last lap, but, you know, just pushing it hard. You could see his lap times. Red first sector that last lap, uh, you know, a personal best. So uh, he was on another good lap, seen that podium there and was coming. But Kyle Wyman, you know, has kind of unloaded this weekend and been fast and kind of had that look, knows that they need to win some races and starting to capitalize today on, on a race and got a great start and, you know just slowly pulled away yeah well and you know we've been talking about it a little bit how sometimes for a racer the uh, uh, one of the best tools they have is a short memory and uh, after for him what was a kind of an abysmal bir uh comes in here and it's, it's like he didn't miss a beat right up at the sharp end of things and a lot of times you know when you have a bad weekend you cannot wait for the next race to come up right. so you can go in there and you know get that bad taste out of your mouth and there's no way to to do that than come in here and win yeah, and of course, uh, not having Tyler O'Hare or Jeremy McWilliams in that, both of the Indian riders from the factory team not able to take the start. Jeremy, because oh, it, it probably some damage to the bike, but beaten up a little bit. And Tyler, with that mechanical issue, uh, that cleared the way just a little bit. But nonetheless, it is Kyle Wyman, Hayden Gillum, and James Rispoli. Those are the top three in the battle for the points. Lots of churn unfolding here as we continue this bagger season. Mission King of the Baggers coverage is brought to you by Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. By Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. By GEICO. Visit GEICO.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. And by Drag Specialties, an industry-leading distributor of aftermarket parts and accessories for Harley-Davidson and custom V-twin motorcycles. Kyle Wyman coming into victory lane on his Screaming Eagle factory Harley Davidson after a great victory for him. And six laps on a 620 pound motorcycle is going to wear you out. And there's Hog Spoli, Mr. Sideways. Now let's take a look at these results as Kyle Wyman gets 2.1 over Hayden Gillum for Spoli 4. 
Kyle's brother Travis back there in fourth place. Own sword, Jake Lewis, Flinders, Hawk Mazada in eighth, and Frankie Garcia, the very popular Frankie Garcia, in ninth spot. Well, it's a hot day and it is a slow cool down lap. And you want to, it's interesting because we call it a cool down lap, but it's definitely a heat up lap when you're going at the speeds that we roll these bikes as they head towards Victory Lane. So this messes up this championship for a lot of people. It turns it upside down, but the one guy who's got to be happy about it is Kyle Wyman. He's with Hannah Lopa now. Kyle Wyman resumes the points lead and with his sixth victory of the season. Kyle, how crucial was it for you to get these points here today? Yeah, obviously huge. These uh, The Vance and Hines guys have been running really good, and uh, they were a little bit off this weekend, but I had to really make sure I didn't, you know, let my guard down and, you know, kept pushing and, uh, got the start, got away clean, and just was able to kind of build it and chip away. I really had to push those first few laps, and uh, I'm glad it was in it. So, you know, thanks to the Harley-Davidson Screaming Eagle team, and, uh, yeah, let's let's do it again tomorrow. Congratulations, Kyle Wyman, your mission kick of the Backers Race winner. His sixth of the season. We'll be back, Dakota, with more coverage after this. Well, you can see the elation there for Kyle Wyman uh, having a fun moment with the camera and uh, really, really pumped about it. Uh, for Hayden Gillum, obviously doesn't want to see that championship swing, uh, but, you know, he did everything he could to keep himself right in it here. And, uh, I mean, Kyle was a bit behind, you know, no, it was only three points behind, so... Uh, this thing is just continuing to evolve, uh, but Hayden doing everything he possibly could. And James Rispoli sticking in there as well. But uh, let's head down once again to Hannah Lopa to hear from our second place finisher. Second place today, Mission King of the Baggers, Hayden Gillum. A long day for you, three different classes, but you were able to put it on the box. How are the conditions out there? Uh, it's getting hot. <laughs> it's not. It doesn't seem as bad as yesterday. I think we're all getting pretty used to it. So, uh, yeah, just... Trying to chip away. Kyle's got a little speed on us this weekend, so we're uh, we're finding it bit by bit, but uh, just not enough right now. So if uh, if if we got to do it like that again tomorrow, it's gonna suck. But you know, it keeps us it keeps us in the title race. So it's uh, and it's always good to have two Vans and Hines bikes up here. So awesome. Thanks to the guys, they work their butts off, and I'm uh, yeah, I'm ready to go take a nap. Sounds like a good plan for Hayden Gillum, second place. Rounding out your podium, like Hayden mentioned, his Vance and Hines teammate, James Rispoli. James, a good points haul for you on the weekend. Is there anything that you think you can pr and improve upon tomorrow? Yeah, we got to go a little bit quicker. Uh, as Hayden said, it's been a tough weekend for us. We unrolled and things didn't quite work out the way we wanted it to. But, you know, me and uh, Hayden been working really good. We've been trying to catch Kyle, who... Man, he put burners down every session, and uh, even in that race. Good thing is we could see him, <laughs> and uh, we just got to keep working overnight here. We got a good points haul. Championship's not over, and we just got to keep going. And, man, Harley-Davidson's one, two, three, and we just keep it rolling, baby. James Rispoli rounding out your mission, King of the Baggers podium. Well, congratulations to our top three on the podium, Kyle Wyman, Hayden Gillum, and James Rispoli. third this this title championship now is going to look a little bit different Greg than it did we had two guys three points behind Aiden Gillum coming into this race but now it's going to be Kyle Wyman I believe by a couple of points over Hayden Gillum and then you're going to see James Raspoli nine points back and for Bobby Fong that was a little bit of a costly one because he still legitimately had a chance at this championship had anybody made any big mistakes he's going to have a hard time now staying in it for tomorrow so we have three races remaining in Mission King of the Baggers for the 2023 season which means we have 75 points on offer so only the top five remain at this point that are mathematically in this championship for Bobby Fong, obviously, for Tyler O'Hara, who didn't get to participate in this race, yeah. they're pretty far behind in this one, especially with the way these three are riding. So we expect it to be a three-horse race when we get done with this race tomorrow. And for those wondering where Jeremy McWilliams was in this race, he had an incident earlier on in the hooligans that, that uh, made him unfit to be able to, to join us in this one today. So that's where the other factory Indian was. Yeah, so Tyler O'Hara, Jeremy McWilliams, Corey West as well, who is eighth in our points at the beginning. He unfortunately didn't start, as well as Robert Johnson in this race. But... 
Kai Wyman's not thinking about any of that. He's just thinking about occupying that top spot on the podium. Well, for Kyle Wyman, he retakes the championship lead, but what's going to happen at our next Mission King of the Baggers race? We can't wait to find out. And that Baggers race will unfold about 4.05 local time here tomorrow as our final day will commence of Superbikes at Texas. Here's a look at the schedule on Moto America Live Plus. We kick everything off at 11.10 a.m. Eastern Time, 10.10 local with the Medallia Superbike warm-up, Mission Super Hooligan B main race, then Steel Commander Stock 1000 race two, Mission Super Hooligan race two for the A main, Super Sport race two, Medallia Superbike race two, and then we will close it out with our second race for Mission King of the Baggers. So a really busy day of great racing tomorrow. Look forward to having you all join us for our coverage here on Moto America Live Plus. Once again, for Jamie Howe, uh, for Roland Sands, who sat in with us, for Roger, I'm Greg Kramer. It's so great to have you tuning in and joining us here. We look forward to bringing it to you all again tomorrow. Make sure you join us right here on Moto America Live Plus. Have a lot of fun tonight, folks, but be safe.